Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. And if you haven't seen it yet, Disney Pixar released Onward and it was in movie theaters. Now it's able to be bought digitally and rented and bought on DVD soon. I don't know when, but you can see all this as Ian Lightfoot has been drawn. I'm gonna go ahead and teach you the tutorial today on how to draw Ian Lightfoot from Disney Pixar's Onward. What we're going to do first is we're going to lay out Ian's body. So we're gonna have a big majority of the stick going over here, so that means we need to roughly start placing his body on the page over off to the side right here. So we're starting with the shape of his head. So you see how I'm making it a little bit longer because Ian's head's just a little bit bigger. It's kind of off to the side, so I'm gonna make this, bring this off to the side, round down here. And then I'm gonna go ahead, bring down his neck from one side. So I'm gonna come down on the left side, bring down here, and bring down his neck over here. And then we're going to roughly place his torso. So one arm's up in the air, so we're gonna put one arm up here. We're gonna bring down this part of his torso here. So one arm's being extended up, go down. So this part's gonna be up here. And this arm's gonna come down here. So we're gonna go up, in, then bring down this part of his arm. And I'm just gonna make a circle right now for where his hand is gonna go. But that's where his hand's gonna go. This is where his wrist is gonna stop and where his plaid shirt stops. And we're gonna bring down this part of his leg and then we have this part of his leg that's going out and then back down. So from the middle, judging from the middle of his body all the way down, right here, we're gonna go ahead and just divide up the legs. So he's got really skinny legs. So you're gonna go ahead, bring this one in close and bring this one in close. Same over here, keep this relatively close and this one close as well. Round it off right here. And then eventually right here is his kneecap. Same for over here, kneecap over there. Round out this one. Bring down this one. And then we have a shoe here. We're gonna take this leg over here, round this one up, back into here, and I'm gonna actually bring up this part of him. Next for Ian's arm, you're gonna go all the way up and circle upwards above his head, go up, and go circle right back down. And then he's going to be holding the staff, so I'm gonna make a circle of his hand around the staff. And I'm gonna square this off right here, bring this down, and a thumb will be coming up off to the side. So you see how I round that down? So to sort of solve a problem I had, I wanna go ahead <laughs> and I connected these two together for the staff. So you're gonna go up with the staff. It's gonna go out, and then we're going to make the cage right up here of the staff. So I'm gonna make this cage up here and that way we can set the stone and all the binding, twining, whatever. And then we're gonna go right back down. I'm gonna make this go out in. I'm gonna go right through Ian's hand. Bring down this side of the staff, go down. Kinda make it skinny as it gets down closer to the end. Ready. So let's go ahead and zoom in on his face and start placing where his face is gonna go. Now I know that they've got interesting looking teeth. We're not gonna draw individual teeth. Hope you don't mind. We're just going to draw like our straight lines for the teeth instead of all these jagged, uneven teeth. 
So, <laughs> all right. The first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and give him his eye guidelines so we can place the eyes later. And I'm going to divide his face down the middle. His face is kind of turned off to the side just a little bit. So going off to the side right here, we're gonna place one eye. And he has a good, almost perfect circle eye. Not a perfect circle, but it's definitely close to being one big round circle. And then we're gonna go off just a little bit over here, same level, go up, round this down, and another perfect circle. So it's gonna go in. The next part we're going to do is we're gonna start right here with his nose. Now we have a bit of a nose ridge but the top of the nose is right here. You're gonna go out, kinda of go off to the side of his face. We'll adjust that later. Bring it down, and you're gonna go up, and back in. So it looks really weird. <laughs> it almost looks like a mouth without a nose, but still, we're getting there. I'm gonna round off right here at the bottom of the nose, kinda of round it down. You're gonna make one nostril right here on the left side and I'm bring up this little distinction of nostril over here, one here, and you're gonna jump over here, kind of round off this side, bring off the side here, make one good harsh line there, and then we start to see the nose ridge going up. Now we'll fix the size of his face later. We just needed some like guidelines and some blocks to place everything. We're gonna go underneath the nose and we're gonna place his mouth. So you're gonna start from off to the side. You're gonna go down with the nose and then up. So you're gonna kinda go off to the side again. And then you're gonna Keep his mouth open, go down, and then up. This side's gonna come in, bring this down, and then I'm not gonna do jagged teeth, we're just gonna start from inside there, round off the teeth, and it's gonna go right into the side. Before we fix the side of the face, what I'd like to do is go ahead and place his eyebrows. So above this eye right here, you're gonna make one eyebrow here. Bring off this eyebrow, nice thick eyebrows, a little bit of a caterpillar like. You're gonna make this eyebrow go in. Bring it in. Fill it in. Bring a little bit of a line here, a line there. Now we can go ahead and fix that side of his face. From his eyebrow, you're gonna go off to the side right there. Bring down along the side of his eye. And you're gonna go in. Get to a nice, good, rounded chin underneath that smile. Go up and round this off right here. And we're just going to bring this in and connect over here because ultimately his hair is gonna be all floofy around his face. Now let's jump inside of his eye. So let's start with this eye over here. And make sure you give him a nice, good top eyelash line on both sides. I'm gonna make one pupil iris area right here. Up towards the middle, leave a little bit of the white on top. And then I'm gonna make another pupil iris area right here. here, one 
here. I'm going to make a little shine here and a little shine here. I'm going to make the pupil build up around that shine. Same for here, and he's got brown eyes. Probably counteract that crazy blue all over him. Most importantly, we need to go ahead and place his ears. So from off to the side before we place his hair, I'm gonna start with the right ear first. You're gonna go out from his eye area. And go down and back in. Then we're gonna go out here. Go out. Round down back into the area where his cheek is. I'm gonna round off right here like it's kind of coming to a point. And that's just to give a little bit of definition into his eye. See, I do like this backwards S. Just to give a little definition, same over here. We're gonna get that little bit of an earlobe definition. Now, his hair is all kinds of crazy. But you can kind of start to see a little bit of a pattern of the swooshes and where to go with them. So from his part, you can kind of see, jump over here, give a little bit of sideburns, and go up. So you go up over here. And then we got another little bit of sideburns. You're going to go in. Not sideburns. We got the part over here. You're going to go up, up. And then we've got a little bit of forehead showing here, but then we come back to these sideburns, which they go up. And then we got another section going off here. And this section goes this way. And then this section kind of goes in like this. So we can kind of see the different places of where the hair is gonna go. So starting from over here, you can bring this hair off to the side. And it's just a fun curly mess, so I'm sure there's no wrong way to do this as long as you have the part in place. You can go in and kind of define the, that curly hair. Make sure he has that side burn in front of his ear. That's a darker blue from his skin. See, I'm just kind of going crazy with the curls because that's mostly what his hair is made up of. It's just a bunch of curls. Now we'll come back and we'll shade up his face just a little bit later at the end. From his neck, you're going to start with the top part of his collar coming in towards his neck. You're going to kind of bring that down. And then you've got this part of his neck here. We see it going up. And then part of his neck here is going to go in. And that's his other collar. And that's going to go down. And we're going to make sure this is a nice, good slope still. So this part of his shirt, I'm going to go ahead and create that middle part of his shirt. So you're going to bring this all the way down. And you don't want to make it a straight line because it is a button-up shirt. So you can kind of make it nice and wavy, just to add a little bit of realism to it. Curve this in, make this flat here. And you got some, a little bit of, a couple of folds from his shirt too. So you can go in, make a couple of buttons. From up here, you're going to round off where his arm is going up. You're going to 
gonna make this nice and round going in. We're gonna bring this out. And that's the other part of the shirt. It's kind of separated just a little because one part of his shirt is being stretched to go up. For his arm, you're gonna keep going up. Make this nice and straight going upwards because he's holding it nice and straight. Same here, you can bring this one down nice and straight all the way down. Now for his hand that's grasping the staff. From his thumb, you're gonna, we're gonna make his hands just a little bit bigger because he's got like Avatar looking Pandora feel going on. These guys look like they're from Pandora. So I'm gonna circle off the thumb because they've got large hands. Square this off. Bring that down. And then we've got this part here. We're gonna make another finger here. Another finger here, so they just kind of look almost like, you know, sushi rolls, California rolls in a way. Or, I don't really eat sushi, but it looks like them sushi rolls. And you see how it, that finger just looks like it's crossing over, and then you have a staff that's going right down the middle. Drew a difference in size, so you see they go downwards. I'm gonna round this off for his hand, and this part is his sleeve. Now going up with the staff, ultimately we've got this gem in the middle. I'm gonna leave this in the metal, and it's a big yellow stone. Starting from here, you're gonna curve the staff to go up. So you go up, bring this around. Make that top part really wide. You're gonna bring this down. And you want to make it look like it's going in front of it. So you see how I kinda of curved it and I started to go up and I cut it off with this line? So it makes it look like it's twisting. Off to the side right here, you're gonna go out. And you're gonna go in. And down. Make it round on top like we did over here. And then this part of the staff off to the side is gonna be behind the stone. It's gonna go out towards here. I'm running out of paper again. I'm back behind the stone. And ultimately, it should be looking like it's sitting in a basket. And you make this a little bit fatter on top. There we go. And there's a stone in the middle. You just wanna kind of go throughout. We're not gonna draw the intricate designs in the staff. But you're just gonna go around and make it look a little bit more wooden. With this arm over here, you're gonna bring out this, go down. Same straight, kind of. I'm gonna make this a little bit s smaller, bring this in a little bit. Bring in the wrist, that is, bring it in. I go up and then back into his body. And we can draw his plaid pattern in a bit. But for right now, I'm gonna go to where his wrist is coming out of the wrist part of his shirt. Bring out this part 
You're gonna go out with his finger first. Bring it in. And you're gonna bring out his thumb, go down. You see, kind of curve it in. I'm gonna bring down this part of his hand, go down and then into his thumb. And then underneath right here, you're gonna bring down his middle finger and go in, kind of mirror alongside the pointer finger. And you're gonna bring down the ring finger and then we can't see his pinky as well. I'm gonna square this off just a little bit right there. Now for a plaid shirt, you can never really go wrong with the pattern of a shirt. You just know there's a bunch of like circles and stripes and everything. So I'm just gonna go through and just mark off where this big blocks of the circles are. So it's a red and blue shirt. So I went through and made these stripes. I'll do the same thing over here with stripes over here on his arm. And then with the stripes going across his shirt, you do not want these to be straight across because remember his one arm is going up, so it's stretching the shirt upwards. So I'm gonna make his stripes kind not even, but they're not straight across. And then you can kind of go through you can color in the stripes. And then you're gonna bring this stripe all the way down and that should create that pattern of a plaid shirt. And you just kind of color it in. So I'm gonna go down here this way too not making it a straight pattern once again. Now for his jeans, starting in the middle, I'm gonna go ahead and make that zipper line this part you're gonna bring out just a little bit and you're gonna define his skinny little <laughs> legs just a little bit more and when you get to his knee you're gonna bunch up the material just a little bit and you're gonna go in a little bit more and you're gonna bring this out and then right here at the bottom I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of cut this off here Bring out this part so it's just more folds in the jeans. And you're gonna round up that folded part. And then we have a shoe right here. So we're gonna bring out the shoe. We're gonna go outwards. So just do a basic shape for right now. So you go out, down, and back in. Round off right here, go back into here. And I'm gonna draw in a couple of shoelace lines. I'm gonna bring this part in just a little bit more. And that's as easy as I can make that Converse shoe to look. Same over here, we're gonna start with this part. We're gonna round off right here. I'm gonna make a pocket line here. Bring this one down, same over here. I'm gonna round off the knee. Bring out this part, bring down this one. Right here, you're going to make the same 
folded up material. And then for the shoe over here, it's facing us, so we're just gonna kind of make a rounded up look to it. Round it up, go out and then in. I'm actually going to use the bottom of my paper here, to bring it out, go out, and bring this part out. There we go, that's much better. I am running out of paper all different places. So I'm gonna round off that top of that converse, and this part should be going inwards, and this one should be going down into his shoe, so the bottom of his shoe is being seen in the back, but not in we can't see it along the side, but we can see it in the front. And that should just be rounded up. Same for over here. We're gonna go ahead and just make simple little shoelace lines. I'm gonna actually draw these close together as well. We don't really see like a shoelace knot. We just see the shoelaces. I'm gonna bring this up and down. There we go. So this is a typical power stance of a hero. One foot over here, one foot over there. One thing I'd like to do with his face, some shading tips, is underneath his nose where we made that original line, you're gonna just go ahead and shade underneath that nose to give it a little bit more definition. And I'm actually gonna shade alongside this eyebrow here to give that distinct nose ridge cut off. So let's see how I shade that in there. Make this nice and rounded here. Keep that eyebrow nice and dark. Make a little line here. Make this nice and round. A little line here. And make this just a little darker here and here as well. And there you guys go. There's how to draw Ian Lightfoot from Disney Pixar's Onward, which is pretty cool because now we can actually watch the movie. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, I hope you'll go and whenever it's able to be rented, maybe you rent it, or you can go ahead and buy it now. But yes, I'm very excited to see this movie and I hope you guys have a most wonderful day and you'll go ahead and you'll draw Ian. I'll see y'all later. Bye!